Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated. Well, you know, let's go slowly through the quiz. And as you as you as you go through the quiz, the answers will come, the questions will come. And when those questions come, then we'll answer them. Okay, loads and fishes. Yes. That be is a bleak. Oh, bleak fissure, correct. So this is the bleak fissure, and that is the horizontal fissure. And this is the right lung, then, absolutely, correct. And uh, what do you have? What is this? That is just the oblique fissure. Wait, do I have the answers here somewhere written down? I actually do. Okay, well, just give me one second. Let me just copy paste this. Okay, and that this one is the uh, just the oblique fissure, and you can't see the uh, you can't see the horizontal fissure, and so this is the left lung. All right, so these are lobes and fissures. So A would be a lobe, B would be a fissure, C would be a lobe, D would be a fissure. No, D would be a lobe, E would be a fissure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the light upper lobe, call it the superior lobe, that's fine. Superior is also fine. Superior is. And C then? Right, lower lobe, correct. And D? It is the left upper lobe, but there's a particular part of the left upper lobe. That is the lingula, correct. E would be? Oblique fissure. That's fine. And F. That is the inferior lobe. That's great. No, that's the, that's that. That's that's the superior segment of the inferior lobe. That's fine. We will do those segments also. All right, that's good. Did we? Okay. No, we will go to the bronchopulmonary segments. Trachea. So B. Okay. What's A and what's B? Yep, that's the thyroid gland. B is just a trachea, correct. And that's the level of the thyroid gland. At T1, again, this is just a trachea. I will just be taking you through this. Okay, T2. I'll, what is A? Those are the apices of the lung. And, uh, and B would be? the trachea again. Let's keep going. Come on. Okay, now. Correct. A is the trachea. And it's got air in it. And all esophagus. Yeah. It's got a nice little muscle wall around it. But sometimes the lumen is open and not open. Sometimes you can see it as an air. Sometimes you can't. But that's where the esophagus is. And you should always be, yeah, that's where it should be. And that's where you should be looking for. 
All right. Now, I don't know what I put this. I guess I forgot to label it, but that's the trachea. Now, what is A? That is the Karina, correct. And let's keep... All right, so now we go to the bronchopulmonary segments. Okay, let me ask you if you remember these things. No, let, me, let me just go over them. Okay, do you remember what this is? And what this is, and what this is, and this, and this. So one thing at a time. What is this? Correct. What is this? Brachus, that is the brachiocephalic trunk. Left common carotid. And left subclavian. And this is? Left brachiocephalic vein. No, that is the left brachiocephalic vein. And this one? That is the right brachiocephalic vein. Correct. And if we go one step down, what is this? That is the arch of the aorta. And this is the superior vena cava. Very good. And uh, what is this? That is the ascending aorta. What would this be? That is the descending aorta, and what would this be? That is the SVC again, and this is? That is the pulmonary trunk, and that is the left pulmonary artery. All right. Bronchopulmonary segments. So we will do the right lung first, like we just did. All right, so what is A? Right main. And, and you're... No, no, right primary is the correct term, but because you said right primary, I wrote I, I, I wrote right main, so you know both terms. Yeah, but they're both. You can call them right main or right primary bronchus. They're both correct. Apical segment of the, of the superior lobe. Of the left. <laughs> yes, correct. Now, yeah, you can call it a loba. You can call it a loba. You can call it a loba bronchus also. But you have to tell. But you have to tell us which lobe it is. Yeah, so it you can call it the you can call it the superior lobar bronchus, correct? Or or you can call it the superior secondary bronchus, but yeah, but lobar bronchus is also a correct term. So good good work. Uh, so superior lobar bronchus, correct? And A would be A is the anterior segment of the superior lobar bronchus, correct? And B would be Oops, posterior segment of the uh, of the upper lobe or the superior lobar bronchus. Correct. And we've already seen the apical segment, which was higher up here, which you've already correct. Well done. Okay, so let's keep going down. What is that? Yes, bronchus intermedius. Yes. Yes, correct. Now you know bronchus intermedius. Yep. Can you can you see these? Can you understand these vessels? I believe you can. That's the SVC. And that's the pulmonary trunk, and that's the right pulmonary artery. So good. So you you understand. I mean, if you saw a CT of the chest, at least the heart is clear, and by the end of the session, uh, the lungs will be clear also. So that's really good. So that's bronchus intermedius. What else can we do? Okay, bronchus intermedius. That I believe is still bronchus intermedius. I just think I took it down one more level. Um, <coughs> Just 
to a Broncos Intermediate. <coughs> Let's go down one more. Okay, so here we are. Yes, so it is a middle low bar. If you can also go secondary, Broncos. Correct. That's not B. That would be C. What you what B? Yes. Well, you could say that. It it would be, yeah, it will lead to the trunk of Passage, but let's say just slightly before giving this off, maybe like a millimeter before giving this off. What would that be? Uh, yeah, inferior, yeah, inferior yeah. Or, or lower low bronchus, absolutely. Excellent. And this is, what, what, what segment of this is the lower low bronchus? I think you mentioned it. I forgot. Superior segment, absolutely. Segmental bronchus. Superior segmental bronchus of the lower lobe. Correct. Now, what is this? No, now this is the truncus basalis. <laughs> yes. Basalis. This is now Truncus Basalis. I'm sorry, it's not picking up my spellings. Uh, I wish we had an anatomy dictionary, so I wouldn't have to correct everything. Okay, so now we're going one further one down, Truncus Basalis, and now you need to tell me what A, B, C, and D are. Anterior of what? No, that's not, that is not, th that is the truncus basalis. These are not coming from the truncus basalis. So where are these coming from? If you look at these, I'll go up a few. Hold on. Those ones, I'll go up another one. And that will be, absolutely. So that, which one would that be? That is the medial segment of the middle lobe. Correct. All right. This would be the lateral segment of the middle lobe. Good job. And C would be, oh, yes. What is C and what is D? C is still the, it, it really is, it still is the truncus basalis, how, even though it has given off one segment, what's the first segment that it gives off? No, it is medial. I, I forgot, I did not show you a mnemonic, and I should have shown that to you. But the mnemonic, the mnemonic is... No, it is. I can't. I don't know if you can see it. The mnemonic is malt. I, I might as well show it to you. Uh, no, no, no. I'll show it to you. I've got it written here, right here. It's just not on the screen. Respiratory system on CT. So this is what I sent you. This is the checklist. And the mnemonic is malt. M-A-L-T. So what it means is, this is what I've got from the right primary bronchus. There's a right main, and there's a right upper lobe, and then the segments of the right upper lobe. Then it's a bronchus intermedius, then right middle bronchus, and those segments, then right lower bronchus, superior segment, then truncus basalis, and then truncus basalis divides as malt, medial, anterior, lateral, posterior. So medial comes first, then comes anterior, then comes lateral and posterior together, sort of. And on the left side, the mnemonic is ALP. The M is not there. There's the anterior medial that comes first, then the lateral, then the posterior. So MALP and ALP. No, MALP. MALP and ALP. Sorry, it's not MALP. <laughs> what am I doing? 
MALP, M-A-L-P, and A-L-P, MALP and ALP. And so here we are. No, that's not where we were. I think that is where we were. So, so now we've got the Truncus basalis. It's given off its first branch. So if you use the MALP mnemonic, what would it be? It would be the medial one, as we've already written it. So it's the medial segment of the lower lobe. And it's and it's one of the basal basal segments. Okay. Let's keep going further down, one step further. And then what's next? Anterior segment. Yep, seg anterior segment of the trunk of the or I'm uh, which is correct. I'm just going to I'm just going to write of the lower lobe. Uh, all right. And that continues down. I'll go down further and then that divides into two and then those are Which one would be posterior and which one is lateral? A would be lateral, correct? A would be lateral. Lateral segment of the of the lower lobe. Correct. And this would be the me uh, posterior segment. Oh, yeah, you did that. Segment of the lower lobe. And uh, remember that it is the right lower lobe. All right, fantastic. Well done. So you can see them now, which is great. Yeah, it's, a, it's a big achievement. All right, left lung bronchopulmonary segments. Are you ready for this one? So what is A? A is the carina. Yep, carina. All right, let's go down one more level. Is the left primary, and uh, a, 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 yep, that's correct. A is the left primary, and B is the apical segment. That's true. But apical segment of what? I mean, apical segment of which lobe? Correct. Apical segment of the left upper lobe. Good job. All right. Now we've gone one step further down. A would still be the left primary. Ah, uh, you know that's a good question. Now, <laughs> let me let me let me look that look at that again. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. Left is confusing. I get confused myself. Okay, so first of all. Where is that? So it's going to be the apical and posterior one, apical posterior. And then there's the there's the anterior segment. So actually, I think we've got this wrong. Mm. Yes, I think when we go one above, that is not the ap that is the anterior segment. That is the anterior segment of the left upper lobe. And the, B is still the anterior segment. And C is the apical posterior segment. And let's see where it goes down. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So let's look at it again on the CT. So just make sure that we don't miss it. So... Here we let's go from the apices. That's the best to say. So you're going to see all of them come together. Now they're all coming together. There. So that is your anterior. Uh, that is, that is your anterior, and that is your apical posterior. So that's your apical posterior. That is the anterior. So when. So when, so no, I think I've done something wrong in my quiz. So this 
this is higher. That is my fault. This should be up here. Do you see? That's the Carina. Then after the Carina, you should be able to see this. The anterior segment and the apical posterior segment. And then you should be here. And this is not the apical segment. This is called something else now. We, we we are going down. So I'll, let's let's start once again. Sorry for the confusion. That's the carina. That's the carina. We go down a little bit. And there you've got the left primary, which you've got right. And you've got the anterior segment. Uh, and you've got the apical posterior segment. Yep. Now we're going further down. And the anterior and apical posterior segment have come together. So that still is the left primary, but the anterior and apical posterior segments have come together. So what do you call that? Close, close. The secondary superior lobe, yeah, yeah, the, the superior lobe bronchus on the left side then divides into two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Absolutely, you got it. Now you got it. You got it. You got it. Absolutely. It, so it is the superior division of the upper lobe of the left upper lobe bronchus. So only you know how 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 fun it is to confuse it. But there, you know, that's how we, we didn't we didn't choose our anatomy. So there you go. Superior division of the left upper lobe bronchus. Fantastic. And this superior division, I'm going higher up now, will divide into the anterior segment and the apical posterior segment. Okay, now let's keep going down. So that's the left primary. You've got the superior division of the left upper lobe bronchus. Now let's go one step further down. Now, what is A? Slightly there. <laughs> this is hard. You know, if, if I had put it there, yes, it would be in fear division. You, you're not wrong. I'm trying to ask a question that's almost impossible to ask. But if you wrote that, if you wrote in fear division of the upper lobe bronchus on the left, I would have marked it correct if you'd written that. That is correct. But uh, just, I'm actually trying, I, I don't want to give you, I'm actually trying to get just... The superior lobe bronchus. I'm basically trying to get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get it. The superior lobe bronchus is very small. As soon as you get the superior bronchus, it divides into the upper and lower divisions. But all right, I'll call it the inferior division of the superior lobe bronchus. Because you get the concept. The, the, ob the objective is to get the concept. And, uh, and that's correct. All right, so the inferior division of the superior lobe bronchus, and what is B then? Yes, correct. That is the superior lingular segment. And that's all you have to call it, actually, because when you call it lingular, it automatically tells you where it is. Yeah, so that's they use that term, radiology, the superior lingular segment. So that means... Uh, if they didn't use the word lingula, they would have to call it the superior segment of the inferior division of the upper lobe. <laughs> so, so it's a superior lingual segment. Every It's clear to understand what that is. So that's good. And then let's go one step further down. Correct. So A is the inferior lingular segment. Now, lingular segments are hard to see in the axial view. So, I've got a... Yeah, absolutely. And so, they're, they're very close to each other and they're hard to see. But I, I, I've got, I've got uh, a quiz for you in, the, uh, uh, in this view also. So, you're going you're gonna to be there very soon. Okay, so that's the inferior lingular segment. You got that correct?
Yeah, absolutely. So in fear lobar bronchus is correct. I'm just going to write lower lobar bronchus just so you get used to that term also. Both terms are correct. Lower lobar secondary bronchus. That's really good. Okay, lower lobar bronchus. Let's go one step further. Correct. Correct. Superior segment of the lower lobe on the left side. Correct. Okay, next. Oops, one step further down. Truncus basalis. Well done. All right, we go down one further. It's the ALP. Anterior, lateral, and posterior, but anterior is the anterior medial. Yes, the anterior is the anterior medial. B is the lateral segment, and uh, C is the posterior segment. And these are all basal segments. That means they will go all the way down to the basal lungs. So whatever comes from the truncus basalis, the reason they call it truncus basalis is those divisions go to the basal lungs. And that's fantastic. Good job. Okay. Before we go into the coronal images, I just want to quiz you one more time on stuff that I know you already know, but let's look at the heart. So what can you tell? What is this? Right ventricle, and this would be the left ventricle then, correct? This is, and this, left atrium, correct, sort of, correct. Can you, I, I know it's not the right um, contrast for it, but there's a vessel right there. Do you know what vessel that is? No, 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 no. Well, right cornea arch goes that way. The left lung. It's the left circumflex. Good job. Good job. Good job. Left circumflex is all fine. Circumflex is fine. Good job. Yep. Excellent. Okay, I'm going up one. So we've done that. What is this? Let's just talk. The root of the aorta. And if there was an artery, well, you'll see that more better slightly higher up. And uh, what artery would be here? That might actually be that artery. That would be the right coronary artery. And let me move up uh, further what artery is this one left anterior descending correct and you you can tell this structure here uh svc you mean Well, you can sort of, uh, well, the IVC is near the liver. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. IVC, 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 IVC is right here, and it, that's the IVC, and now the IVC is gone. So if you can, if you can see the up, upper blood vessels, then that can't be the IVC. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no need to apologize. And yeah, absolutely. So you got that now. Where is that thing? Okay. And so absolutely, that's the SVC. Let's go a bit further up. And now you can see that's the uh, aorta again, the SVC. That artery you've already d uh, told me, that's the uh, left anterior descending. What's this thing here forming? Uh, yeah, that's true. That's the apex there, but but I've gone up now. It's formed it now. That is the pulmonary trunk. Absolutely, that's the pulmonary trunk, and that's the right and left pulmonary arteries. Good, 
and that is the ascending aorta and descending aorta. What's this thing here? That's the esophagus, and that's the SVC. We just did that. So I think you got it. I mean, this is almost the same level, um, and and we've we've done that level, and we've done the levels above. So good. The heart is fairly clear. Great. All right. Let's do the. Well, that's good. So we you you, you remember what we did this morning. Ha <laughs> ha. Good job. All right. Let's just do this now. A is a trick here. Okay, Karina. Literally the bifurcation. Now, oh, actually, I, I hope I'm not wrong. This this area is probably, if you want a very accurate answer what the Karina is, it's this thing, this loop. At that point. Uh, and can you call the bi? I think you can call the bifurcation Karina. It means the same thing. But this area is definitely Karina, this point thing. And just under that is subcarinal. Correct. Apical segment of the superior lobe. Very good. On the right side. Yeah. Superior bronchus. Yep. Yeah, superior lobe by bronchus. Or secondary is also fine. Correct. Medius uh, on the right. If you ever give a radiology exam, I, I don't bother with it uh, in my teach. Well, I should bother with it in my teaching, uh, but I don't make too much of a fuss about it. But in a radiology exam, if you get right or left wrong, it is wrong. Yeah, I mean, you, if, you, if you call this the truncus facilis of the left or you didn't mention what side it was, that would be the wrong answer. So I, I don't fuss about it too much, but it's it's something that yeah. Uh, left primary, yep, left main I'll say. Primary is also correct, yep. No, that might be slightly higher up. I would just call it the superior division of the uh, upper lobe bronchus, yep. Yep. Correct, so that is superior division, that is essentially the inferior division of the uh, of the upper lobe bronchus on the left, correct? And I is the upper lobe bronchus. Did, is that what you said? Yes, I is the upper lobe bronchus. Absolutely. Right, sort of right there. Great. Good job. And this is just a bit further deeper in. Yes, so what is A? Oops, I answered that. Superior lingular. So superior lingular segment, I don't have to say left, right, or upper, lower, because it just... Inferior lingular segment, and there you go. Great. All right, nonetheless, all done. Okay, very well done. Okay, um, let's do the pathology quiz. 
So, what do you see there that is abnormal? As an hematorrhage. So if you look to the pleura, you can still see the division pretty clearly, but you can see that the lung tissue isn't going all the way to the edge. That is classic. That's classic pneumothorax. You can you could see it in a, uh, if it's big enough. You could see it in an X-ray. Pneumothorax. You can you can easily see in an X-ray. Uh, let me just put it up. See, look at that. I mean, this is quite extreme. I'll open the image. Just let me see some that are. Th that's also nice. Let me open. Just give me. Well, let me just show you one or two more. Uh, and you should see a normal chest X-ray also. Let me just show you a normal chest X-ray. Normal. <coughs> Oh, normal x-ray. Oh, well, this looks like a normal x-ray is a chest x-ray. Well, that's nice, too. Okay. So let's look at the normal chest x-ray first. Oops. Oops. Too big. That's quite nice. So if you look at a normal chest x-ray, again, you, you should be, if you look at look through the diaphragm and look at the edges, and what you should be able to see, you should see the lung markings go all the way to the end. Again, in the diaphragm and across the edges or at the apices also, you should be able to see the lung markings go all the way to the edge. A small pneumothorax can be missed. Um, it's sometimes hard to see. But if it is a proper, nice, big pneumothorax, then it is fairly clearly seen. You can see the lung border right there. And you can see the lung tissue is not extending to the ends. And that is a very clear pneumothorax. Uh, that also looks like, oh, that's even more obvious. That, that lung is collapsed completely to that size. And you can see that pneumothorax. Some pneumothoraces are subtle. Uh, some aren't that obvious. Um, oh, this is... Uh, let me see, thorax. Like this one, I don't, well, this is also fairly, well, oh, wait, I can't see actually. Because that, that's breast tissue. Sometimes you could confuse breast tissue with, uh, with lung markings, but the lung markings are going all the way. But um, I think, yeah, I think this, actually, no, this is good. Because it's a bit subtle, but not too subtle. Yeah, when you see it large, you can. It's actually he's actually put a marking of the lung there. They have, and you can see that beyond that, you actually can't see lung markings going forward. But this is a female. That's that's a breast shadow, and sometimes a breast shadow can confuse it. But that's not the case. All right, and so uh, here we go. Here we've got the pneumothorax. Well, this is this is air, and you can see this is a lung tissue. All right, so that's a pneumothorax. Well done. Next one, not too much, too too different. Yep, a pneumothorax also. And uh, do you know what a tension pneumothorax is? Absolutely. So your trachea and your whole structure. I'm not sure. It, it does look like a bit of a shift. Uh, it's, uh, but yes, uh, in the tension pneumothorax, the air comes in, but cannot go out. Uh, and that's how sometimes it's a hole in the lungs and the air is coming in from the lungs also and can't go out. Um, uh, actually, usually it's a hole in the lungs. So there could be a hole out. So what happens is, is that you get a stab wound. It makes a hole here. And so air gets in, but it also punctures the lung. And every time you breathe in, Air is coming in from the lung and coming in here also, and air from the outside is going in also. But if this like blood or for or some or even uh, sometimes you uh, you uh, you can uh, you can bandage a wound in such a way, uh, or it could even just clot. That air can come in 
every time you breathe in. Air can come in here also every time you breathe in. But then when you exhale, it just doesn't go out. And after like about an hour or two, this area becomes full of air and starts pushing that way. And that's a tension pneumothorax. So what do you do? You just have to make a hole and the tension is relieved because the air is expelled. All right. Tension pneumothorax it is. What do you think is here? Now, the lungs are normal. I, I, I mean, the pulmonary, it's, 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 of, it's of a, um, uh, you can't see the lung tissue. That's because of the contrast. Uh, but um, uh, the lungs are normal. But there is something abnormal. Yes. Yes. So it could be very well, it could be blood. So it's not air. And this could be blood or it could be fluid. And and it's a plural it's a plural effusion. Uh and so it's fluid in the plural space. This could be blood. But uh, uh uh, but pleural effusion is usually, you know, edematous, you know, f fluid. So just interstitial fluid. Yes, it's either pushing the lung forward or it's or or the fluid has come. It's, I think it is absolutely pushing the left lung forward. I don't think the fluid. If it's a pulmonary, um, I think, let's see. Uh, uh, there's a difference between the pleural effusion and pulmonary edema. Do I have a pulmonary edema? I can't believe I missed it. I think I did miss it. Do you know the difference between pleural effusion and pulmonary edema? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Exactly. So, so it's in a completely different space, even though it may look on, on imaging in the same area. So pulmonary edema is fluid in the lung tissue. And, 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 al and so the alveolar sac. Absolutely. And pleural effusion is in the pleural space. But let's, now that we're talking about it, I might as well open up a pulmonary edema CT because I didn't, uh, CT in the American spelling so that we can sort of understand that. And so that's, that's good. Yeah, this is, this is actually fairly good. So you can see here that the fluid is in the lung tissue. And uh, and there you go. And so um, that is that is more that is more pulmonary edema instead of pleural effusion. If you saw an x-ray of pulmonary edema, uh, it gets a bit confused with pleural uh, effusion. Just give me one second. Oh, no, what is that? That's the abstract. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta take keep this because <laughs> I, I can't believe I missed it. All right, so I'm gonna keep that there. Now let me let me show you plural effusion on an X-ray. So if you look at a plural effusion on an X-ray, it looks kind of like that. You know, it's 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 fluid in the plural spaces. So it's hazy here. Uh, same thing here, you know, pleural effusion, it becomes hazy. Um, on a chest x-ray, have you heard of the costophrenic angle? You have to look at the costophrenic angles. And the reason you have to look at the costophrenic angles is when they're standing up, when they take the chest x-ray, the costophrenic angles should be sharp. You see, they're not sharp there. A sharp costophrenic angle is like that, the, on the other side. That's a nice it, sharp costophrenic angle. It curves down and then joins the costal area. Here, it's not sharp, so that's a pl that could be that could be a pleural effusion. But a pulmonary edema looks almost similar, you know. So a pulmonary edema X-ray actually looks very similar to that, and and if you look at it here, it it's also blunts the costophrenic angles. So it it's confusing. Uh, that's the costrophenic angle, it's slightly blunted, not too much here, but here, look at that. You know, it's completely gone there. 
and gone there also. So pulmonary edema and pleural effusion can look similar. Uh, and one thing they say is how, how, to, how to spot the difference is um, it doesn't always work, but it's, 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 they use it, uh, is that in pulmonary edema, you, ca you can't see a fluid line because it's edema in a spongy, spongy structure. But in a pleural effusion, you should be able to see uh, a fluid line because uh, uh, it's not in a spongy tissue, it's in the pleural area. And because it's in the pleural area, oh yeah, you can see, you can see, you see that? You can see a very nice demarcation. That's a meniscus of fluid. And uh, you can't, it doesn't work every time, but uh, that's, that's bookish, that's a bookish answer. How do you tell the difference between pleural effusion and pulmonary edema? You can see um, a fluid line. Uh, but on a CT, it's a it's a completely different game here. On a CT, you can actually see the fluid in the lung tissue, versus a, a pleural effusion, the fluid is in the pleural areas. You can actually see that clearly, and that's pulmonary edema. Okay, pulmonary edema. All right, we've got that done. What's next? I think again, similar thing. Fluid in this area. And that pleural effusion. Okay, now this is slightly different. Well, pulmonary edema should be diffused along the lung tissue. This is cons this is in one area. Yeah, yeah, I almost, I, I literally, yeah, a consolidation. <laughs> So this is consolidated in one place, and that is a consolidation. So consolidation is basically infection and pus in one area. And so that's what a consolidation would look like. So that's consolidation. But which lobe and segment is it? That's the next question. Because now that you know the bronchopulmonary segments, I mean, if you saw lung cancer or something, you have to like be able to tell me which lobe and segment is. And, and radiologists actually need to do that. Uh, so uh, tell us. Um, from what we've learned, where do you, how far, where do you think it is? And yes. Good, good point. Yes, think about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I believe so too. I think it, it's around the superior segment. Uh, and and the reason it's around the superior segment because yeah, it's not it's not high up as in the apices. But it's not low down as if you can see the diaphragm and you can see the whole low, uh, whole heart going all the way to the edge there. Uh, and it's in the posterior area. So the posterior area is mostly the upper upper segment of the upper of the lower lobe. So yeah, it looks like the superior segment of the of the left lower lobe. Good job. All right, next one then. What is this? Yes, they are lying on their back. Yes, it could be. It is in the lung tissue. Absolutely. The bronch the bronchi you can see, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's good. That look, that's 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 all I really w it is consolidation again. Uh but good job. Good job. So you you figured out that it was in the lung tissue, and you uh, it's not in the pleural sac. So that's that's the main point of that discussion. But can you tell the lobe and segment? Inferior lobes. 
Absolutely. 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 So it doesn't need fear love. And uh, fair enough. It could be very well. It could be. It also could be. Uh, it could be the spear segment. Also, it's in the. It's sort of in the middle area, but I think you got it. You got it. You got it right. I. I I'm not being too specific here. Plus, if we if it was actually a radiology report, we'll have the full image that you could scroll up and down and 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 look, uh, uh and look at the different planes also. So that's uh, so we don't have that option, but uh, but but good. I actually think yep. I think it is definitely the lower lobe. Uh, sorry, it's def yeah. It's definitely in the low lobe of the lung i think it may be in in the superior segments but it can be a bit lower down it's not in the basal segments in the basal segments you sort of start seeing the diaphragm and the heart apex you can see almost all of it uh but um but it is it can be it can be at the beginning of the basal segments so that's good well done i think the the discussion is what is the more important thing here than the actual exact area so that's a good one all right, what does this look like? Could be a tumor or mass. Now could still be consolidation. Haha, <laughs> it's it's like yeah. No, it, it's 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 hard to diagnose. It, it can be a tumor mass. One thing about tumor mass is tumor mass can have a very well demarcated area. Like sometimes you can have this really well demarcated round nodules. Now this is a bit diffuse, but it could still be a tumor or mass. Uh, but uh, yes, consolidation takes time to fill the lobe. And one very important thing in radiology, apart from the fact that radiologists could probably see and tell, but even radiologists sometimes struggle. And um, uh, one thing that's very important is the clinical picture. Now, if this person presents with fever, night sweats, shortness of breath uh, that developed over the last two or three, uh, two or three days or maybe a week, then you know it sounds like a pneumonia picture. Uh, if the person uh, was slowly going shortness of breath or coughed up blood, but there was no fever, but there was weight loss and night sweats happening over like, you know, a few weeks to a few months, then that, then that paints a bit of a metastatic picture. So uh, the clinical picture is extremely important. So you have to make sure that, that that's what you're looking for also. So uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, which lobe and segment? Now, that is something that, uh, that you should, uh, with your knowledge, be able to answer now. Definitely the right lung and fear lobe, yep. Correct, because this is fairly high up. You can see the great vessels. I think the trachea just bifurcated, you know, and these are the primary right and the primary left bronchi, um, or, or maybe slightly lower down than that. But yeah, you're right. This, this looks like the superior segment of the inferior lobe. And you can see the oblique fissure there, which is quite posterior, which means it's fairly high up. So yeah, well done. All right, what do we have here? We've got these little few markings here and then more markings here same patient could be could be so it could this is this is like a covid pneumonia a viral pneumonia a viral pneumonia, which is classic of COVID pneumonia, but you, you got you, you you got there. It was you 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 were correct. Viral pneumonia can uh, COVID pneumonia could actually cover all the lungs. Viral pneumonia do not cause uh, the uh, I don't know if you would call it consolidation or not, but a bacterial pneumonia, which is consolidation, it's actually pus tissue. So that is white blood cells and bacteria and um, and so that's basically a lot of pus. Now, viruses don't create pus. Viruses create a serous fluid. A virus, in fact, it's like a flu. 
You know, so you, you have this watery discharge, and that can get cover all the lungs. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they do call it consolidation or not now. I'll have to check that. But um, a viral pneumonia can cause fluid in the whole lungs um, if it's severe enough. But here, it seems not so severe, even though that is fairly severe, but not, that's not covering the whole lungs. This person would be hospitalized if you've got amateur of the lungs not working, you could be hospitalized. You actually could be not hospitalized also in certain cases if you're that if I've, I've seen people with that much illness and still not hospitalized. Uh, but nonetheless, um, uh, next question is which is higher, A or B? And again, uh, I would ask you what where is B in terms of the segments? Yes, A is definitely higher. A is definitely higher, correct? And B? Oh, yeah. Well, it could, I, I actually think they went down. It actually it could be the same patient, Thomas. I believe I agree with so it is definitely the inferior lobe and it could be, and it's most likely the superior superior segment of the inferior lobe. Would that be the superior division? I uh, yeah, it, it actually uh, it could be or it could be the superior division or it could be the superior division of the uh, of the lower lobe. Uh, it could be either. I'm I'm gonna have to scroll up and down, but it could be one of the two. So you're absolutely. So that's well done. That's definitely the left main, and that looks like the uh, upper lobe division, and and that could be the superior division, and the inferior division is also right next to that of the upper lobe. So I think it's a bit lower than that. All right. Okay, so what are the different issues that you could see here? Cardiovascular. Oh yes, oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's not. I'm. I'm. No, no. Absolutely. Look, the heart. It looks all this blurry. Uh, and, and and that's because look when we did the cardiac, actually I might as well show that to you again. Uh, the heart is pumping, right? And so if the heart is pumping continuously, how do you get a CT image that is so clear? <laughs> so what they do is that like the ones that we have, um, that I'm that I'm showing this to you. Uh, what what just happened? So like for example this one, uh, in which the heart is actually fairly fairly clear. Now it's turned upside down. I'm going to have to fix all of that. It's actually, the computer's going crazy. So in this one, when you can see the heart so clearly and it's all its chambers, how they take this CT is that they actually, um, uh, they, they have a, uh, a monitor um, either through ECG or they can actually even, I actually think they might even be able to do it without that. Uh, in which they take the image at a particular stage in the cardiac cycle. And so all the images are done at the same stage of the cardiac cycle. And so that's why you can see the chambers so clearly. But if that's not a priority, uh, and it's just a CT scan for the lungs, they don't make that a priority. And what you get is this, you get this diffuse cardiac shadow that you see in a lot of CTs of the thorax. Uh, and that's because they just weren't, 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 weren't going in for that. Uh, and that's what I saw. Where is oh, it's in the quiz here. And so I think that's what this is. I think it's it's just that they didn't look for it. The pathology is this one here. I should have pointed it. I should actually just. Oh, it's horrible.
that's true. So it is some kind of mass. As long as you can sort of pick up that it's a mass there, um, that's all right. And then, and then we're just going to discuss what segment it is. So this is lung cancer that shows up um, that shows up in that area, um, and this is a primary nodule. And you can sort of see it's uh, you can see that it's got a good demarcation. Um, but sometimes lung cancers don't. They have the sunburst appearance also, in which they're because the metastasis is going outwards. You, they can they can look like that. Um, so which which uh, segment? Could be. Probably still in fear low, correct? That's true. It is a lateral segment, isn't it? Uh, and uh, that's a good one. Yeah, you just you just say it's a lateral segment because it's so far lateral, and it is fairly low down. Uh, and you can see the medial sex segment and the uh, and and probably the posterior segment has also been given off. So yeah, I would say the lateral segment too. Good one. All right, let's go to the next one. Now where is the pathology here? Oh, the pathology here is this mass here. PE can also look like color. PE can also look like that color. And it can actually be, yeah, it can it can actually be normal also sometimes, but that's a bit that's a bit big for being normal. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, this is also a bit abnormal. This, uh, uh, I'll just move another one. This this stuff is also a bit bit abnormal. Yeah, it's lymphadenopathy, uh, and when we do the lymph nodes, when we do the lymph nodes, you will you will notice also just like the arteries and veins, the lymphatics also divide according to the bronchial tree, and so they are also named according to the bronchial tree. So these are lymph nodes, and if they are lymph nodes or lymphadenopathy, then I guess the next question of is is again, it's lung cancer in these areas, but which lobe and which segment? This one, superior lobe. Hmm, could be. I cannot say that that could be the mass, or that could be the mass, <coughs> or both. But either, where is this and where is this? Fair enough. Yeah, that that looks like uh, all all the inferior superior lobe superior lobe would be here, don't you think? Top arrow, this one. Yeah, okay. You think this could it be the middle lobe? <coughs> Sorry for my. Let's 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 yeah yeah. Based on the bronchial, let's let's look again. Let's open up the pulmonary window. And let's go, let's start from the trachea again. So if you look at the trachea, then that's, and, and it's on this side, so that's your right main. And then what you're sort of seeing here, what I see here is it's, now I kind of see it, I kind of think, you see that le level? Let me just see, do you think it's kind of at that level? Do you think it's kind of at that level? You've got, you've got, this one going around, you've got this structure here, and the heart is about this side. Now, could this be the middle lobe bronchus? That's my question. So it, so I, you, it could either be the middle lobe bronchus or it's a superior lobe bronchus. All right. So let's see. Now, now this is what the middle lobe bronchus looks like here. And if I go higher up, well, let's lower down. If I go higher up, then this is the. This is a superior lobe bronchus. So it does. It looks a bit lower. Well, it doesn't look like it's at the superior lobe. Would you agree with that? So it looks like it's a bit lower than the superior lobe because you know you've got the truncus. That looks like the truncus basalis 
uh, or the or the lower lobe bronchus giving up its superior division, and that looks like the middle lobe bronchus giving up its lateral division. That's what I would think. So that would be that would be the middle lobe, and that would be you know the maybe the junction between uh, the the middle lobe and the inferior lobe. All right, well that's well done. Okay, now this is a little mass over here. Little solitary nodule. How can you tell the difference between the others? Well, I don't know. <laughs> that's how I, that's how I got the uh, image, really. <laughs> so uh, again, the question is, which lobe and segment would this be? That's true. This is confusing, isn't it? What is that? So if those are the bronchi, would that be the trachea? Here we are. What is that? If I asked you what bone that was. No, not the clavicle, but close. The clavicle attaches to it. And, we'll, and, 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 and we will do this uh, in the next session. That's the scapula. So let's see, when you've got the scapula of that size, where are we? So there's a scapula right there. So the scapula is quite long. So, okay, now this lady also has her arms up like this. The scapula is in a funny, funny position. But if you look at this, you've got the whole scapula there. And the heart is sort of conical in shape. It could be at this level. Uh, if you go further down, so here the trachea looks intact, and you can see some bronchi. Oops, what is that? Oh, no, and so it looks like the trachea hasn't bifurcated yet, and looks fairly high up, and. Uh, let me just, I think it, I think if, if you look at it, if you follow that image, it looks like it's kind of like at this level. So you can sort of see the art of the aorta there. You can't see it, but I think it's all blurred. But uh, it seems that it is fairly superior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now th th this might be the oblique fissure. So, so yeah. Now that now how high is that? Now that that is quite high. Uh, that's how high this is. So, th so that's the apices. So let's go from the apices. So that's the apices. That's fairly high. So that's still the upper lobe, upper lobe, upper lobe, apical section of the upper lobe. Still the upper lobe. Now, now when you start seeing the oblique fissures, that is where the superior segment of the lower lobes are beginning. So. Yeah, that's probably still in the spear lobe in that one. And uh, so if, 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 so absolutely, it seems that that is still, that is in the superior lobe. Absolutely. So it's like in the posterior segment of the superior lobe. Nice. Uh, that's good. All right, these are these are lots of lots of nodules. Sorry. I've got interstitial lung disease. Well, a, a clinical picture again, but I've got a few interstitial lung diseases in it, and you'll show it. But if you see many nodules round, well-demarcated nodules, and you also have to look with the history also, uh, you can think of secondary metastases. Primary metastases usually has one nodule, and lungs is a very common site for secondary metastases. Would you know why lung is a common site for secondary metastases? Probably the, the most common site. I'm sorry? Is lymph drainage? Yeah, it is lymph drainage. Where does all the lymph drain to? 
thoracic duct and wh- and then where does the thoracic duct drain into and the right lymphatic duct where do they drain into correct correct absolutely into the um, uh, yes correct absolutely absolutely so that's exactly what it is so secondary metastasis in the lung is common because if all your lymphatic so uh, cancer is either going to spread locally obviously and then if it's going to get to a distant site it's either going to go to the lymphatic system or the venous system now if it goes to the lymphatic system or if it goes to the venous system both directions it is going to find itself in the right side of the heart it's not going to get stuck in the right side of the heart because there's no capillary bed from the right heart it's going to go into the lungs the lungs is the first capillary bed it's going to encounter and there you have secondary metastasis then then if it spreads from the lungs then it is going to find itself in the left heart then it's going to find itself in the arterial system and then it will spread everywhere so initially secondary metastases go into the lungs then from the lungs they will go they can go anywhere in the body and so if it's gone to the lungs it's already pretty bad so secondary metastases there you go all right what is this i can't even remember but you can see you can see masses and you can see that i don't think that's a mass i think that's the diaphragm but you can see small masses. Uh, and I uh, let me go to the next slide to see what am I actually... Secondary metastases again. You can see a lot of these secondary metastases here. That's probably a nodule also. All right. So I think you can tell that this is a bit apical. This is quite high up. Um, and you can tell this is quite low down. So these are the basal segments of the both lungs, left and right lungs, and that's the apical segment of the left lung. So I guess uh, this is fairly. Uh, I think I think we've got the I think we got the idea of being able to tell the segment. I think we've done there well. Now, what do you think this is? So what's the abnormality do you see here? And that's this. And Close, close. Emphysema looks like this also, but there's slightly difference. Uh, but it's not an emphysema. And I've got an emphysema also, and I'll explain why the difference is. Or dilated. Yep, so that's bronchiactasis. Yes. So in bronchiactasis, your bronchioles dilate. Emphysema also looks like this, but the difference is that emphysema is bulla or uh, holes in the air spaces or not just enlarged air spaces. If you get a CT of bronchiactasis and you scroll it up and down, you would see these will actually find them, their way into the segmental bronchi and in the primary bronchi. You could follow these. In emphysema, you will see a lot of holes, but you can't follow those holes. They're, they're in the same area. Yeah. So if you saw something like that, these are these. This actually is the airway. So if you go up and down, uh, you will see the bronchioles will get into become segmental bronchioles and then secondary bron bronchi and primary bronchi. So you can so these you can follow these air spaces, but in emphysema you can't. So this is bronchiectasis. Uh, that I think is also bronchiectasis. Dilated air air, air spaces, uh, and I think this is emphysema. But if you had a CT and you moved up and down, you would not be able to actually join it. Yep. So that is emphysema. And these are little air spaces. And uh, all right, now what is this? Okay, you can ignore all the others. Look at this and this and this area. You get a bit of that here also. Uh, 
Yeah. Alexis's, Alexis's, you know Alexis's? Alexis's is a collapsed lung. Yes, Alexis's, you know, uh, lung collapse, now that you mention it, the term lung collapse is is not a medical term. The lung, the the, 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 even though uh, even though they use it, it is actually not a medical term, uh, and the reason for that is, is that uh, the, the, when you say lung collapse, you confuse them b um, between two things, and one is a pneumothorax, and one is atelectasis. I don't know if I can say the word correctly. Now, at atelectasis is a collapse of the alveoli, and that. Okay, atelectasis is a collapse of the alveoli. They usually happen because of pneumonia, or because of an or, or because of a viral infection or an allergic infection, in which a segmental bronchi or subsegmental bronchi uh, gets stuck with a mucus plug, and then air doesn't enter, and that and so the alveoli collapse, and that is atelectasis. Uh, and pneumothorax, as you know, is air in the pleural spaces. And and no, but the alveoli are fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the alveoli. Uh, if you can get air into the alveoli, they'll be breathing. So, so when they say lung collapse, every time I've heard lung collapse in in teaching, they've either met either meant atelectasis or they've meant pneumothorax. So lung collapse should not be used in the medical term because then you have to explain but what is it then is it atelectasis or is it pneumothorax so um, so yes this could be atelectasis but it it's got these air spaces and this is this could be this could also be infection and consolidation that people you know with emphysema can have but this is definitely emphysema and these bullous air spaces and sometimes these bullous air spaces rupture and when they rupture, they cause a pneumothorax. Yes, you can see here in the plural space right there. So pneumothorax can happen. Uh, 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 the most common cause of pneumothorax is usually puncture wounds or a fractured rib. Um, but in emphysematous people, they can get pneumothorax without any trauma. And that is because the emph the emphysema bullus just burst. Mm, great, and you can also sort of see which area this is in. Now these are turned upside down, but you can see this is fairly higher up. Uh, this is all fairly higher up. This is this is near the tracheal bifurcation. It's not too far down. All right. Now what is that? You will not be able to guess. But you can tell that it's in the upper lobe because it's right in the anterior aspect. But you can also see it in the posterior lobe. But this is sarcoidosis. So this is an interstitial lung disease. And uh, let's keep going. I think this is similar, some sort of interstitial lung disease again. And that's sarcoidosis again. And unfortunately, not too many good images. This is not sarcoidosis. This, again, is, looks like a solitary nodule, which it may be. I mean, you could confuse this with a lung nodule if you didn't uh, actually look at um, the, pul the, the clinical picture. But, um, but I'll tell you the clinical picture. Uh, in this one, it's severe chest pain and shortness of breath. Probably a PE. Well, there you go. Pulmonary embolism with lung infarction. Is the infarction absolutely infarcted lung disease? Because once once the tissue infarcts, unlike heart and brain, well, even there it happens. Infarction leads to edema. So edema is the first thing that happens. But because the tissue is thicker in in heart, uh, it's not too obvious immediately in the CT. But in the lung, the edema becomes more obvious. And uh, this is a similar thing. It's one of the pulmonary arteries. 
that got uh, pulmonary embolism and that led to an infarction further up. And this person would have presented with, again, severe chest pain and shortness of breath. And, and yes, you have a wedge-shaped infarct. And the wedge-shaped infarct it, with a PE you can get, and you can see that this is also kind of wedge-shaped. And this, and this one is also, oh, where did it go? And this is also wedge-shaped. And that's because of the distribution of the artery. You know, as it goes further, it just expands. And that is how the pulmonary infarct uh, will present. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's the end of it. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated.